Oh, hello there. <laughs> Happy book release day. You may be wondering, did I design a dress that looks like the cover of my book so that I could wear it on book release day? Yes, <laughs> yes I did. <laughs> I think it came out pretty cute. I'm feeling it. <laughs> so here it is. Today's the day. It has been a goal of mine since I was a little girl to write a book and I waited a long time thinking that I needed to be finished. <laughs> finished maturing and learning and reading other people's books and I needed to be really successful. Those were all things I had in my head that I needed to accomplish before I wrote a book. And last year, a lot of the notions that I held about what success looks like, what my life would look like, what being healthy looks like, really got rocked by some of my life circumstances. And all of that led to the catalyst of me starting to write this book. And I'm really glad that I did. I started it in July of 2018 and finished writing it basically by the end of 2018. I wrote a lot and I wrote fast. And then I spent all of 2019 editing and writing a little more and moving things around and working with an editor and editing it myself and rethinking all my life choices <laughs> and designing the book and figuring out the printing and figuring out how to self-publish and doing all of that. So this year, this past year, it's 2020. Hello, welcome to 2020. So all of last year was about making this happen. And today is the day. The year I became with Snail Mail Superstar is a book. I can hold it in my hand. Other people are holding it in their hands and they're gonna be reading it. And I just, I put everything that I have into this book. It won't be my last book because I loved writing it. And I have a lot more to learn and a lot more to share and a lot more to say. Um, so this won't be my last book, but it is my first. And here it is. I used my Olympia typewriter to type all of the chapter headings and page numbers and the cover. It was in honor of my great grandfather who sold Olympia typewriters and his father who worked in the typewriter factory. It felt really meaningful to me. That typewriter, the specific one that I typed this on was one I purchased midway through learning about my family history, learning about the snail mail superstars in my family and it felt right to include it in this way. And in 2018 and 2019, I spent a lot of time painting mailboxes and thinking about them and I wanted to include them as well. I'm feeling at a loss to know exactly what to say on this day, on this occasion. I can feel past me imagining this day and now that it's here, I just feel really grateful. Grateful for everything I've learned, gratified that the work I put in on this has come full circle and really excited to share my story with the world. What I'm gonna do is read the introduction chapter for you today. I'm gonna have a little story time with the snail. That's what I'm calling myself today. If you would like your own copy, it is available in a paperback format. It's also available on Kindle and I will include all the links to all of those things down below. 97 people pre-ordered this book, which may not seem like a big deal to many, but to me, it's huge. That means 97 people believed in me enough to not only want to read my book, but to spend their hard-earned money on it while I was still finishing it. To have it in hand on release day, to read it, and to tell their friends about it. And as someone who is self-publishing, as someone who's never written a book before, it means everything to me that, that you've believed in me. So thank you to everyone who pre-ordered. Thank you to everyone who is here along for the journey, who watches, who subscribes. I feel like this is, a, this is a meaningful day for our community, for all of us, because without you, none of this would have been possible. None of this would have been worthwhile. And without you, I wouldn't be Snail Mail Superstar. So thank you for being here with me today. And I'm gonna stop talking before I start crying and I'm just gonna read you some of this book. So let's just do that, okay? You with me? All right. Do it like the library. 
Hi buddies, it's me, Snail Mail Superstar. You may know me from watching my videos on YouTube or from following the growth of my business, Constellation Inco. Maybe we went to school together, had a mutual friend, or met at a happy hour that one time. However you've made your way to this book, you probably know this about me. I love snail mail. Snail mail, waiting in the mailbox and bearing my name is tangible proof of another person's love and affection for me. It's not instant, and that's why it matters a little extra. Snail mail takes time and effort. It means someone stopped the grind of daily living to form thoughts and words and write them down with me in mind. An incoming letter means someone spent hard-earned money on a card and a postage stamp and sent their gift to my address. Snail mail demonstrates my worth in the lives of people who know me. It's not the only way to exhibit love and indicate value, but it's a way that means a whole lot to me. Snail mail is a beautiful, practical, and portable art form. It's personal and intimate, words chosen just for me, written by hand in a unique script. Snail mail is delivered by hand by a mail carrier with a name, a personality, and a story. The daily arrival of the mail is an incoming opportunity to build another friendship. My outgoing letters are friendships that I've sent out into the world being delivered in the mail. Snail mail has connected me to people that complete a circle of support helping me stay healthy and whole. Each person giving in small ways offers words of kindness and comfort that make a major difference in my life. Snail mail helps me fight the epic battle that is always waging in my mind. Voices of doubt tell me that I'm alone, unloved, and of no value to the world. Snail mail tells me a different story. The cards, letters, and postcards I've received are evidence of love that I can point to on dark days. They're a tangible something that wallpapers the rooms of my mind. They shed light in dark corners and help to drive out my most negative thoughts. Snail mail is something I can collect and keep and come back to, remembering friends who have gone in days I'd have otherwise forgotten. As a kid, I was quiet and shy, more comfortable with elderly family friends than with other children. I was a dreamy eyed little girl with a lot of imaginary friends. I had a deep and abiding love for Peter Pan, Anne of Green Gables, Nancy Drew, and the works of Charles Dickens. My favorite places to shop were antique stores. The old things made my old soul feel at home. Over the years, I've dabbled at collecting old things, postage stamps, books, raggedy Ann dolls, over the top hats, milk glass vases, paper ephemera, and printing presses. My first tabletop printing press was purchased in Arcadia, Florida while I was in college. Arcadia is a rural area with a historic downtown full of antique stores. I grew up going there a few times a year with my mom and dad. I like thinking about little Sarah quietly browsing the aisles of antique stores, not knowing that someday she'd find and buy something that would set her life off in a brilliant direction. The phrase snail mail itself is a relic. The term is considered a retronym, a word coined to differentiate the old version of something from the new version. The term snail mail first appeared in 1942 in the headline of a newspaper article about slow mail delivery. Many years before my birth, society saw all the failures of the traditional land post system and looked ahead to a future solution. It brings me a sense of comfort and connection to know that my first snail mail mentor, my grandmother, would perhaps have heard the term snail mail when she was a young woman. I love snail mail because I love people. I'm also terribly afraid of people. They are unpredictable and sometimes they don't like you no matter what you do. I really need people to like me, but I don't assume that they will. My brain has been collecting 30 years of evidence that people can be dangerous. I've got organized manila folders in the filing cabinet of my brain full of anecdotes detailing my life's pain. It's not a great way to go about the world and I'm working hard to empty the cabinets and move forward with trust and confidence. Snail mail is a way I can connect with people, talk to them, share my heart and be vulnerable, but at arm's length. I can spend 10 minutes writing a letter to someone, spilling my guts on the page. I can send them everything I've ever wanted to say to them. And then when I put it in the mail, I don't have to think about how they'll respond. When they receive my letter, I hope it makes them feel good. I hope that it makes them happy and I hope they will send me beautiful snail mail in return. I hope that the connection will be made. It's a hopeful endeavor and it feels safe. Even when people let me down, snail mail never does. Going to a party or other social event is terrifying because I might not say exactly the right thing. 
The most carefully chosen, honest, and true things come through my fountain pen or typewriter onto paper or through my keyboard onto a screen. When I'm face to face with a person, sometimes I end up saying things that I don't actually mean or I didn't actually mean to say exactly that way. So I love letters because I can edit myself. I can crumple it up and start over if I haven't expressed myself quite right. My whole life has been a search for exactly the right thing to say and exactly the right words to describe what I'm feeling. I'm not there yet. I will probably spend the rest of my life trying to craft exactly the right word, phrase, sentence, paragraph, page, and book. Snail mail is a way that I have found to get those exploratory words out. It's a method without too much risk, without too much money, and without too much time. Snail mail makes me feel less alone in the world. All my favorite people and endeavors set out to do things for just that reason, to make people feel less alone. I suppose that's why I'm trying to be as honest as possible while writing this book too. I don't want you to feel alone. Writing, sending, and receiving letters has always been part of my life. It's hard to reach back far enough to remember learning these skills and discovering my love for them. From my own recollection and recent research, I believe that my maternal grandmother, my Grandma Jean, was my first pen pal. I don't remember if I loved snail mail right away on its own merits or because it delivered my grandmother's unique brand of love and joy to my mailbox. I'm going to guess it was a little bit of both. I had a childhood pen pal starting when I was about six years old. Her name was Sarah Elizabeth and my name was Sarah Elizabeth and we were the same age. That's about all the coincidence a little girl can handle. So of course we became best friends. While I didn't get to see the heyday of the postcard craze or the peak snail mail days, email arrived to the general public in my lifetime. I have very clear memories of the day I got my first email address. I was giddy with anticipation as the dial up modem bleeped and blooped. I wrote my snail mail pen pal an email for the first time and then stared at the screen in expectation, waiting for an instant response. It was an exciting day, but the sparkle of email wore off pretty quickly. It's a necessity of being an adult in the modern era, but it certainly doesn't excite me anymore. A hand addressed envelope in my mailbox still does. I remember painting tiny ladybugs on our family's mailbox at my childhood home. I'd forgotten about the ladybugs until exactly this moment, and the remembrance of them makes me feel warm inside. My dad called me Bug when I was growing up, and my grandma Jean bought me all kinds of little gifts with ladybugs on them. When I see a ladybug now climbing a leaf or pausing flight to take a rest on my arm, I say hello to grandma. That mailbox witnessed all of the early years of my snail mail education. What a blessed relic of my growing up years. I wish I could go back and give it a hug. My first real love interest was at about 12 years old. We were pen pals, of course, and wrote a pile of letters back and forth about Latin mass, homeschooling, and Pokemon. He broke my heart with a letter. While the ending of our friendship was truly painful for my young heart, I also remember seeing myself as a melancholy character. I felt mature and important in my heartache. I can picture young Sarah clutching the offending letter to her bosom and weeping. While I've always had a flair for the dramatic, it is unlikely that this actually occurred. Perhaps in the made-for-TV adaptation of this book, we can get the reenactment crew from those 1990s true crime shows to recreate this little foray into the imagination for me. I was an only child until my sister Beth was born when I was 13. For her 11th birthday, I sent her an elaborate Hogwarts acceptance letter, complete with a somewhat disastrous attempt at a wax seal. I would not attempt another wax seal until the summer I started writing this book many years later. I've improved with age in many aspects, like a fine wine or a weird stinky cheese. I was tempted to reprise my role as pretend acceptance letter sender recently when Beth was waiting to hear from the college of her dreams. Unfortunately, the stakes are a little bit higher now that she's entering adulthood than they were in the years when she was daydreaming about Hogwarts. I wish that giving her everything she wants in life was as easy as learning to conquer wax seals. Knowing Beth, she doesn't need my help to achieve her dreams or conquer her goals. She's quite capable on her own, and always has been. And that fact doesn't stop my desire to smooth the path ahead of her however I can. I couldn't feel more protective, but I also couldn't feel more proud. In early high school, I passed enough letters to destroy a forest. They were the kind of letters written with gel pens, ripped from a spiral notebook, 
and folded into little footballs to be passed from sweaty hand to sweaty hand. After my first big breakup, I tried to set them on fire in a trash can in my parents' kitchen. I realized the error of my ways in time to douse the flames. Sorry, mom and dad. At least I didn't burn down the house. For a period of time later in high school, I became entrenched in the community of an online message board for a pop punk band called Reliant K. I made dear friends and even a couple of paramours with whom I exchanged many letters. The practical wisdom of the day didn't look kindly on friendships with strangers, but I found them to be far kinder and safer than most of the people I knew face to face in high school. One high school boyfriend sent me long missives about our future and how we'd create beautiful anarchy together but he never seemed to like me much in person. In the end, I didn't even merit a breakup letter. He just ghosted me completely. We didn't call it ghosting in 2003, but you get the idea. In college, I spent a few months corresponding with a soldier who was at boot camp. We met while vacationing at a dude ranch in Colorado. We became friends while riding horses and camping in the mountains. It was nothing like my real life, and the whole thing eventually went nowhere, but the sending and receiving of letters was a joy in and of itself. Through my childhood and young adulthood, opening my family's mailbox and finding something with my name on it was a highlight of life for my snail mail obsessed heart. In college, I even had a series of nightmares that I'd forgotten the numeric code to my on-campus mailbox. Receiving the mail is apparently as important to my sleeping brain as it is to my waking brain. When I see a mailbox, I see a friend. I see something that can connect me to the people I love. I see an entity that can take my words and send them in reliable snail speed across the planet. Sure, email and social media are faster, but they've got nothing on the magic of a physical object arriving in my hands from thousands of miles away. In the United States, the mail collection boxes are blue. In Canada, they're red. A couple of dear friends took a trip to Europe this year and sent me tons of photographic evidence that in Ireland, the boxes are green. I haven't done much international travel but I'd love to find out for myself what mailboxes look like across the globe. Maybe someday. When I started this writing project, I gave it a code name, Origin Story. <laughs> All good superhero canons have an origin story that shows who they were before, what made them that way, and how they became who they are now. All the adventures and capers and great things to come in the narrative need the origin story to set the scene. This is Snail Mail Superstar's origin story. This is my story, but it's not just about me. The story is about going back to my beginnings, to the woman who gave me the magic of snail mail. And this story is also about the man who taught her to write letters, the man with all the postcards. It's also about his father, who brought home a typewriter from the factory to teach his son to write. This story is about how a dreamy-eyed kid who never fit her moment in time wasn't as much of a misfit as she'd imagined. This is a story about family and grief and connection and correspondence. It's about mending the chains that were broken to see the long line of colorful snail mail characters that stretch out behind me. And maybe, just maybe, writing the story will help that long line stretch into the future too. As I sit down to write this book, I'm experiencing one of the most insane and transformational years of my life. I would not have endeavored to write this book this year if I knew when setting out all the things the year had in store. The element of free time alone is an absurdity. Beyond that, I would not have chosen to write something that people might read in an era of my life that finds me so raw. I would not have chosen to live through a year with such losses and struggles and triggering of old grief and trauma. I am, however, quite grateful that I've had time and a place to untangle the threads of my mind. I'm grateful for consistent access to therapy and acknowledge the great privilege that access really is. This book would have been something different if this had been a different year. But I think, I know, that this is the book I needed to write. I can't tell you all the things I've learned without telling you about my year. It may be messy and raw, but it will be true. Let's begin, shall we? What I hope is that this book and the stories that I've shared will be impactful in people's lives. If one person finds themselves reflected here, if one person feels a little less alone, if one person is inspired to write a letter, 
if one person is inspired to connect with their family and if one person goes to therapy or addresses their own grief, um, this will be a success. And I'm just really happy. So happy book release day. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching this. Again, if you want to read the rest, if I've captured you with my compelling story time, feel free to purchase the book below. There are a couple different options. I will love you forever. I already do. I am terrible at starting and ending videos, and this one is especially difficult to start and end. Oh, but we did it. We made it. I'm an author. Let's go make up on my book. <laughs> Bye, buddies. Little superstar. Okay, yeah, we're gonna. We're gonna not just cry about this. We're gonna not do that. <sighs> oh boy. I have a little story time. It's now. It's now. It's there, it's now. Snail mail has connected me with the pe- I suppose that's why I'm trying to be honest as pop. <clears throat> I suppose For my own recollection. Okay, that's a word. I had a childhood pen pal. I was giddy with anticipation. <laughs> I love my voice. To recreate this little four way. This the practical wisdom of the day didn't look friend. Didn't look in college, I spent a few months corresponding with a soldier who was a book. Okay, okay, okay. All right, you're a mess there. Okay, all good superhero canons have an original. Okay, all good superhero canons have an or an or. Okay. I'm a mess. I'm snotty mess. You're nasty, girl. You're nasty. Oh my gosh. Okay. Me and my mailbox dress are just gonna go have a dance party or something, because I need to, <laughs> I don't know, I got some energy I need to get off.